Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. Welcome to Throwback Thursday and look what we got today. This is a real rare one. This is a uh, considered one of the best Bonnevilles ever made by a lot of people. And uh, what it is is a Triumph TSX 750. It's, uh, well, it's kind of a Bonneville. Uh, I did a lot of research on it and there's a lot of conflicting information so I'll try to give you my best, you know, best of what I found. The engine is uh, similar to what was in the uh, T140 ES, it's electric start with a Kickstarter on this particular model. It's considered one of the most unique ones. It's they only made uh, 371, I believe, and of that, about uh, 200 we think came to America. The rest went to Europe and other parts of the world. I think 100 were for Europe, and the rest were you know other places and. I guess the idea was that this was going to help save the end of Triumph, but uh, anyway, quite a bike really. Um, a lot of very interesting and quick, uh, very interesting and also conflicting information on it, but I'll, I'll give you what I think is the most accurate stuff. So it's a 748cc parallel twin, two valves <coughs> per cylinder, so four valves total. They also made a version later, or I think it was called, let me see, I got my notes here. A TSS model that had a four valve head, and they've actually got one in the other room over yonder. But I'll, maybe I'll get a picture of that if I can. But uh, that head was supposed to go into this, and it was going to be the TSX8. And that bike never never uh, came to be. But uh, some people have put those heads on these particular bikes. Actually, the machinist here, he uh, he talked, he brought that to my attention. Actually, he said he'd actually worked on one of these heads before. Quite a deal. Nine and a half to one compression. Um, so here's where it gets a little interesting. This has amal carburetors. Uh, some of the data I found said it had two 34 millimeter amal carbs, and that's what this seems to have. Now, the early ones were supposed to have a Bing carburetor made by amal that was a constant velocity, and I found pictures with that. They kind of got a domed head on them, but apparently they had some problems with those, and later they went to something else. Now, we don't know if this was a conversion from the Bings to this particular amal, or if this is the uh, what they did after the you know, later in the deal, we're not sure about that. Anyway, these are supposed to put out about 58 horsepower. That's another conflicting number. I got I got I had another number that said about 48, but I'm going to go with 58, 750. It should be five-speed transmission. Um, this actually has original tires. This bike, by the way, is uh, this, these are actually original miles, I believe, which are 2358. We'll get back to the gauges here in a bit. But uh, front tire was a 19 by 100, and here's the real cool part: the rear tire was a 16 by 100. And uh, this has the original Avons on it. The uh, apparently the advertising had a different kind of tire on it. I can't remember what that was, but the actual bikes when they were released had the Avons on it. And they also has I think they were called uh, Morris Mags maybe for the rims. I'll put that down below if I got it wrong. The uh, bike was supposed to have a 55 inch wheelbase, 55.2, that's 1,403 millimeters. Have about a 30.5 30 inch seat, that's what it was known for, the low seat, that's 775 millimeters. And here's another number that was conflicting. Um, supposed to have a dry weight of 421 pounds, 191 kilo, kilograms. I found a couple numbers for that, some were a little higher. Not much, within within 20 pounds, I'd say 30 pounds. So not too bad, we're, you know, we're probably pretty accurate there. Uh, the other thing I found that was an oddity was they said some of these were, you know, some of the information around said a five gallon tank or a four gallon tank. And that's just, that is not a five gallon or four gallon tank. That's just, you know, there's just not enough volume to that thing. And um, I'm trying to look here. I found, we think this one is a 2.8 gallon tank, and that is, that's about 10 and a half liters. And that would be about right for the way this looks. So, very nice in that sense. Uh, top speed on these are supposed to be about 100 miles an hour, and I already mentioned the uh, 371 were made, is what they believe. And these were made at the Meriden factory in the UK, and this, the quality was supposed to be very high, and they were known for that, having high quality. They're known for having a good smooth ride, a little bit of a quivering, but uh, you know, good overall ride. And uh, they weren't, you know, the, the power and 
power was supposed to be relatively smooth, but you know, probably not considered fast, especially in 83. Um, so jumping over to my other set of notes, this is actually the, one of the first bikes I've had where I've had two pages of notes. We'll try to get through those. So this is a Wayne Moulton design. Wayne Moulton was the uh, head of American Triumph at the time. And uh, they asked him, or somehow or another, he got to design a bike that was specifically made for the American market. They had a model ahead of this that didn't do well, and they wanted to do something to, to get that done. And uh, this is what he came up with. It's the only uh, Triumph that was ever designed by an American. Bonneville was ever designed by an American. Triumph Twin, I should say, that was ever designed by an American. And uh, by design, I mean, you know, probably not the engine, but everything else looks and such. It's called the West Coast style. It a uh, factory custom, whatever you want to call it. It was known for having this low seat down here where you already talked about the seat height. Um, you know, this kind of a twin staggered seat. You know, if you look at normal Triumphs, they're all flat seated all the way down, you know. This one had a step seat. That's unusual for a Triumph. Um, 16 inch rear wheel versus I think the standards were 18. Let me see if I have that. No, I didn't write that off. And then there was some talk about uh, offset engine. We were talking about that in here a minute ago. And we think what they're talking about is if you look here, these spacers right here, there's a fat spacer here and a narrow spacer there. And we think the engine had to be bunged over a little bit. We're not sure why, but we think it's because of the wider tire. Because if you look at the clearance here, we're very tight. And they said something about a different swing arm, and this chain stay was different also. So you think that's because of the wider tire. The engine was just kind of pushed over to the chain side of the bike. It's a very unique. Um, the engine is supposed to be similar or identical almost to a standard T140 Bonneville. Uh, another thing was the larger pipes. Look at these pipes, they're very beefy. I mean, look at this. Now that's a 500, so that's a really bad comparison, but... And uh, they had these kind of cut megaphones, very stylized, you know, very good looking, I think. I like, I do like the way it looks. Uh, this was the first bike, speaking of looks, that had a first Bonneville that had a sticker on there. And this, so this is a sticker, this tricolor, you know, remember this is the early 80s, tricolor design right here. And the, this is a paint pinstripe system there. But, you know, same here, sticker. I'm amazed they've lasted that long. I mean, this must have been stored in a very good way. These shocks were at a different angle, a higher higher angle. Now, I don't know if a higher angle means this way or this way. I would assume it means this way because they were trying to lower the end of the bike. You know, they put the, the smaller tire on the lower seat. I'm guessing they changed the angle of this to get the bike a little lower. You know, kind of the American cruiser style. Came in two colors. So it came in this burgundy that we have here. And it also came in what they call midnight black. And apparently for every two burgundies they produce, they produce one midnight black. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, other things about this bike. In some markets, it came standard with electric start with an optional kickstart. In other markets, it came standard with a kickstart with an optional electric start. This one has both, which I think is nice. Other things is uh, the bikes did not come with a center stand, or very few came with center stands, I should say. This one has a center stand. And I don't know if that's been a retrofit or if that's one of the original ones. This is the, uh, the stand was unique to this particular bike because of this crossover pipe right here. Uh, another option that was interesting on this one that I think is interesting anyway, is it came with a single disc. Look up here. And you could get it with a dual disc. And uh, the all the I read three different articles on this. All of them talk about how this was a Lockheed brake system. Yeah, it says Lockheed right there. But on the rear, this was all Lockheed, but the Master cylinder was Brembo. So the Brembo rear master cylinder, Lockheed, everything else. And uh, I, you know, this was known to handle pretty well. That was one of the other things that I read about it. It's supposed to have, but it's supposed to have just a fabulous sound. Like, you know, I mean, look at that. That, that. That's an original pipe from the 80s, and that's just, yeah, it's just phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, real quick, I'll show you all. You guys always want to see this. So Baxter Cycle Triumph 1983 TSX 750 cc's. There's the price. Uh, so we'll start with the front. Single disc on the front. By a modern standards, that seems like a small disc. I found conflicting numbers on that. I can't remember what they were, but you know, it's it's a pretty anyway. Uh look at this big chrome caliper Lockheed master cylinder, the mag wheels. 
Look at this fender, isn't that just beautiful? Uh, the That was another thing I kept finding was the quality of the build was supposed to be just fabulous. Another thing I read was that the uh, blinker locations, most people would move the blinkers from here up to the headlight. And I thought that was an interesting thing. Like, apparently these brackets have problems, but this has the original location, the original blinkers. And uh, this is something I wanted to figure out. I, I meant to look at that. It said that the headlight was mounted on wire. And can you see that? It's a wire bracket. It's got the plastic covers still on the tops here. Very interesting. Uh, let's get back to the back here. Let's look at the engine. So the 7, 748cc twin parallel, you know, parallel twin, um, air cooled. It's got the very Triumph looking, you know, very, I mean, that looks as Triumph as it gets. All blacked out. Uh, milled end of the fans, oil lines. Uh, my understanding is the oil came from the uh, scavenge pump, and that would run hot oil up to the uh, heads, that come through these pipes, get in here, cool the rocker arms, and then back down through the uh, rocker tubes or the push rod tubes. But isn't that just neat? I love this. I mean, just, I just love this kind of stuff. I mean, it's just beautiful. You know, it's got all the characteristics of a modern Triumph engine. I don't know what this is here. Uh, these are Amal carbs. We already talked about that. We don't know if they've been changed or if this was a modified bike or a, you know one of the later versions that came with the Amal. So we think came with the Amals anyway. We talked about the pipe, that beautiful pipe, the Lockheed. I'm sorry, the Brembo uh, brake caliper, and of course look at look at these the rubber on this looks brand new. I wonder if that's I mean, that actually looks brand new. I wonder if that's been changed. I don't know the answer to that, but. Uh, with this few miles, you know, who knows? Of course, the kickstart. The uh, everything I read said the starter was weak, and that people would kickstart it when it was cold, and get it running, and then once the bike was warm, they would use the electric start. Had different side covers than a Bonneville, of course. Different seat. I already talked about that. The higher bar on the back, gorgeous. I, I have, I have really wanted to do some of these newer Bonnevilles, some of these newer Triumph, but they're hard to come by in here. Um, most of these bikes are from the early era. This is the end of that era, the end of the first phase of Triumph. But uh, okay, jumping up here. So uh, let's start with the gauges. Veglia, Italian gauges. Um, you know, speedometer, 85 mile an hour speedometer. That, in 1982, 83, that was a big thing in America. All the speedometers had to stop at 85. Um, tachometer on this side. Is this the Veglia too? Yeah, that is. Turn signal indicator, neutral light, oil light, high beam light. This is the key, a little cover over it. Uh, master cylinder. I'm assuming that's the uh, starter light, st starter button, and then the, uh, oh, that's the kill switch. Isn't that something? Throttle, of course. There's that Lockheed master cylinder. On this side, I love the barrel grips, by the way. Barrel grips are fatter in the center and thinner on the edge, and that fits your hand better. Um, over here, we've got horn, turn signals, high-low for the headlight. Just a gorgeous bike. I found this uh, a week or two ago, and I've been meaning to get to it. Like I said, I've wanted to do one of these. I was hoping it wouldn't sell before I got to it. Um, these are, I feel privileged to be able to see it. We like, I'm sorry we couldn't get it to run. Now, if y'all are interested in a vintage British bike of any type, Nordens, Triumphs, Back there we've got aerials, uh, matchless, that's a matchless, that's a 500 G80. Uh, we did a video on that one actually. Uh, any of this kind of thing, you know. Baxter Cycle, BaxterCycle.com, they can help you out. There's a whole line of BSAs over yonder. Those are 500 Triumphs over there. All kinds of neat stuff in the back row. But, uh, you know, and look at all these parts. But if you're interested in anything like that, if you're doing a restore or rebuild on one of your old vintage bikes, uh, you need parts. They are the biggest part British. They are the biggest vintage bike parts supplier in North America. Can I say that again? I doubt it. But uh, they can help you out, and they're also an excellent source of information for uh, motorcycle stuff. Anyway, hey, life is good. The weather outside is nice. I'm going to go ride. If it's like that where you're at, do the same. Wahoo!